I am going to talk today about the concept of happiness. It's a very important word for all of us in our life. In fact, we can say that our life is all about happiness. What is this happiness? It's a positive state of the mind away from the negative state. So I have the positive experience in my mind. So this positive experience is actually the purpose of everything that I do in my life. Whether it's about eating, whether it is about working, whether it's about going out, whether it's about making friends, whether it's about forming relationships, whether it is about purchasing a new car or whether it is about checking your mobile phone. And that happiness is so important that it just not once we want it, but we want it all the time. Interesting thing is yoga is also designed to get this happiness. In the texts of yoga, this happiness is described as Satchidananda. It's interesting and it will help us understand this concept a bit more in details. Sat is true. Chit is mind kind of consciousness which is permanent. And Ananda is that bliss or happiness. So true, permanent, long-lasting joy, happiness is the whole purpose of yoga. Whether it is asanas, pranayam, chanting of mantras, whether it's following yamas and niyamas, following austerities, discipline, meditation, any practice of yoga, whether it is karma yoga or whether it is Kundalini Yoga, the whole idea comes down to this word Satchidananda. That's the goal of yoga. But today, I'm going to discuss the happiness from the scientific perspectives and then try and see if this happiness is possible with yoga techniques. What is the science saying? So let's begin. Happiness is nothing but secretion of different chemicals in the brain. Primarily, you can talk about three chemicals which are known as happiness chemicals. These chemicals in the brain are called neurotransmitters or hormones. Now, these chemicals, primarily dopamine, oxytocin and serotonin. In the brain, there are many nerve cells, 100 billion nerve cells. The nerve cells attach with each other. Where they attach, it's called nerve synapse. And this, in this joint of two nerves, these chemicals are secreted. And when these chemicals are secreted, we experience happiness in our mind. It's a necessary emotion for our survival as is pointed out by the function of the first neurotransmitter or chemical called dopamine. Now this dopamine is released in the reward system of the brain. Reward system is few parts of the brain together such as frontal lobe, nucleus accumbens and other parts. So this, this chemical of dopamine is secreted there in those parts in the nerve synapses. Now what is this, what is the role of this chemical? It's actually a very important chemical for our survival. There was a study done with rats. The rats who have higher levels of dopamine actually search more for the food. They are more active. They explore different locations. They go here, there in search of the food. 
and if they are going to get if they are going to search more there is more chance that they'll get more food and if there is more food better for their survival so this is a chemical directly connected with our survival lower dopamine and the behavior that is necessary for our survival is lower is not very active if you set up a goal in front of you and if you achieve it you get this chemical in your brain secreted it's kind of reward molecule say i want to work hard for this exam so i work hard and when i get the reward oh i pass this exam with flying colors yes my brain gets this dopamine and i am feeling very happy and excited even if i set up some exercise goals and i achieve it i feel great these days there are lots of fitness apps on the mobile phones and then they allow you to set your goal and if you achieve that goal it it feels good so this feeling of good bit excited is because of this chemical dopamine generally speaking if you look at the sensory pleasures that we seek in our life dopamine is connected with these pleasures first food when we eat food we get dopamine and that's why we all love eating food we want to make new recipes we want to try this food try that food go here try this restaurant try that restaurant and why do we would why do we do that because at the end of that eating we get this chemical dopamine and why is nature made that because eating food is necessary for our survival so when i do that action which is good for my survival my brain rewards me with this dopamine the same is true with sex people get involved in the sexual acts because at the end they get dopamine and that's why sex is something that makes people happy if you listen to some music you still get some dopamine people use some drugs recreation drugs they are also directly connected with dopamine alcohol is connected with dopamine secretions arts if you do some fantastic if you see some fantastic picture drawn by some artist it just makes you feel happy excited it's because of this chemical shopping when we go for shopping we also get this dopamine because our brain thinks that shopping something essential for life is good and because of that we feel happy because it ensures our survival traveling to good places also makes us happy internet these days everyone has this smartphones and everyone has this fast internet available so when you use the apps when you watch the videos when you send a message via social media makes you happy because it gives you this dopamine in all if you want to summarize it everything that you can get with money the sensory pleasures the sensory pleasures you can only get with money no one gives you free and that's why the money is also related to this dopamine why i am more interested in money because this money by helps me buy this sensual sensual pleasures the objects of sensory pleasures and these sensory pleasures bring me dopamine so what i am essentially looking for is dopamine so all the things that we do in life connected with sensory pleasures is connected with dopamine now interesting research many studies have found out that the stress has a very powerful effect on dopamine if we are very stressed the dopamine levels go down 
and now the problem starts till now i am saying the dopamine is all good because it's it helps in our survival but now the problem starts stress reduces the dopamine level and that's why when we are stressed we feel not happy that's why when we are stressed we look for some sensory objects that will bring some dopamine maybe i go for coffee maybe i go and smoke a cigarette maybe go and go i go and eat some junk food there are many studies that say that when a person is stressed he is more likely to get involved in unhealthy behaviors such as smoking drinking overeating and these problems why do they start let's go further how dopamine can become a problem dopamine has a law of diminishing returns what i mean by that is say for example i eat a chocolate today say i get for example 10 units of dopamine in my brain for example when i am going to eat that chocolate tomorrow i may not get 10 units of dopamine i may only get 5 units of dopamine because probably the body has learned that chocolate doesn't deserve that much dopamine we don't know so what happens is i have to eat two chocolates to get that 10 units of dopamine another reason why it is happening is probably the brain is continuously changing and the response of the brain to this objects which change the dopamine levels changes over a period of time we don't know but then what is happening is because of this law of diminishing return that tomorrow i get less dopamine than today for a particular object say coffee or chocolate or cigarette it results in addictive behaviors because i know that chocolate is certainly going to give me some dopamine so i go on eating my brain chemistry changing so i need more chocolate tomorrow maybe more chocolate day after tomorrow and over a period of few months i get addicted even for basic dopamine i need certain level of alcohol or certain s- cigarettes number of cigarettes i have to smoke and the stress makes it even more complicated there was a very interesting research done long back maybe in 1970s by this researchers dr olds and dr milner and a very interesting finding of that research the research was done on a rat what they did is they put a rat in a cage and then they attached a very tiny electrode to the part of the brain of the rat the part in the reward system and then if from outside if that part is triggered like electrical impulse is sent then that part of the brain will release dopamine now that electrode that was pointing to that part of the brain nucleus accumbens was connected to external cable and that cable was connected to a lever the arrangement was if the rat presses the lever then that electrode will activate the part of the brain and he will have dopamine so r- pressing the lever rat gets dopamine and the rat was free the rat was alive because the dop- uh, the the uh, electrode was very thin and it was just touching that part didn't really damage anything as such so anyway the rat realized that if he presses the lever then he gets he feels happy of course he doesn't know about dopamine but he feels happy and then after few times when he realized that this is what is making him happy he started pressing the lever continuously and then there was a lot of food that the rat likes but he did not go for the food what he kept doing was he just kept pressing this lever over and over again again and again until he killed himself by exhaustion 
This is how the dopamine is powerful. Results in extreme addictions. All the drugs, smoking, overeating, sexual, pornographic things. People get addicted. Shopping, gambling, all of these addictions are direct, directly related to dopamine. So although the dopamine is important for us in our reward system, it is important for our survival, it has a flip side. And that is, it results in addictive behaviors. We all have addictions with internet. We have all have addictions with chocolate, coffee. So many more addictions, purchasing new clothes. And why can't we get out of it? Because of this dopamine. Now, how does yoga look at this idea of happiness? Take example of Hatha Yoga. When you practice certain yoga poses, you do get dopamine. Many times people, when they start practicing yoga, they feel good and then they continue and then they get addicted. So it's because of this dopamine. But there is another effect of yoga that is even more important. It actually increases the effective effectiveness of dopamine because it de-stresses us. When the yoga practices remove the stress, whatever dopamine we get, it lasts long. Because if you are stressed, it doesn't last long. But if you are relaxed, then it will last long. So you will feel happy for longer duration. And thus, addiction with yoga is good. Because there is no, there are no bad side effects. Like all other addictions. So, yoga does have a very powerful role in secretion of dopamine and Reducing the stress, that increases the effectiveness of dopamine. Let's move on to the next neurotransmitter, which is again implicated in happiness, that is oxytocin. So this oxytocin is another interesting happiness chemical in the brain. It's actually secreted by hypothalamus and it's it, it's also a hormone but it also is a neurotransmitter in the brain it's often connected with our positive relationship and social bonding this is a very interesting idea it is connected with increasing trust between people mother and baby partners friends even dogs the bonding that we have with our partners when you meet your partner you feel happy doesn't matter if you both going to drink coffee or not so this is independent of dopamine just being the main baby just being with mother is so happy the mother with the baby is so happy it increases the trust. Look how much trust the partners have with each other, in each other. Or the mother and the baby share. Even the dogs and human beings, even the friends, this trust building is about is the primary is one of the functions of oxytocin. And that brings positive experience. When I am with my friends, I'm I am so happy doesn't have to be alcohol or drugs together just being with friends this oxytocin also has a stress reduction effect it reduces blood pressure it reduces the uh, stress hormone cortisol so in a way this is a very this hormone has a very positive effect along with social bonding and positive relationships the stress levels are also brought down there are few studies that are going on to evaluate the effect of oxytocin on depression. There are some positive studies which indicate that depression can be reduced, be elevated with the use of oxytocin. 
Now oxytocin is also connected with empathy, compassion. The empathy feeling that is missing when we are stressed. The empathy that is a basic human quality. Which is missing these days in many of us. Oxytocin actually brings it. It also makes one feel more compassion. There was another interesting experiment done. And that experiment was few volunteers were invited and they were divided into group A and group B. Then the group A was given some very nice perfume to inhale and the group B was given oxytocin but of course it was a blind study so the groups didn't know what they are inhaling. And then some random questionnaire was given to the participants and then because they participated in the experiment everyone was given few dollars as a remuneration for their time and then they were asked to leave from two different doors the group a left from say the a door and group b left from the b door in that door they had kept a donation box and the researchers announced that if the participants are willing to donate for a cancer charity they can the group a while going out of that room they put their donation in their separate box and group b put their donation in separate box when they calculated the donations the group a donation was average something like one dollar or something one dollar and few cents and the group b the oxytocin group the average donations were over six dollars per person where they were only given say five dollars so it's a very interesting study that talks about oxytocin and empathy compassion another very interesting study that talks about social bonding and positive relationships which are directly connected with oxytocin is a very important study for us to pay attention and understand. Harvard University, a 75 year long longitudinal study was done. And that study was about following 850 plus people for 75 years. Every year these people went through some tests to check their happiness, their health and satisfaction with life. After 75 years, most of the people when they were dead, the researchers compiled their data. And then they were trying to see the patterns the happy, happiness, happy people, people who are satisfied with life or people who lived longest or people who had very good health and they tried to check the top 10% people in each of these categories. Surprisingly, almost all of these people in the topmost layer were same in every category. Means the people who were happiest were also satisfied with life also had very good health and also lived longest in that group. So the researchers were interested in knowing what is so special about this top 10% people or whatever top layer. And what they found out is there is no connection between money because many people didn't have much money. Was it about education? Not really. They could not find a lot of correlation. But what they found out was all of these people who were in the top layer had very good relationships, long relationships with their partners or very good social bonding, group of friends always together. And that's how they attributed this to very good health, long life and happiness, longevity, happiness, health. 
is all connected with this social bonding which is directly connected to this oxytocin and we can connect it with the stress reduction effect of oxytocin as well another research was done by a very famous researcher dr bruce alexander and the research is about rat park this is a very interesting research where he isolated a rat from the from his family and his environment and that isolated rat was given a water plain water and a water laced with either heroin or cocaine and he observed that this rat got addicted to that heroin and cocaine very quickly water laced with heroin and cocaine he was just drinking it all the time but when that same rat was shifted to a natural like a like a environment he called it rat park which had all the natural things that rats like and the rat family of that rat when he shifted that rat to that rat park where there were tunnels and so many toys and good food to eat and the family of that rat was there so when this rat was shifted to that rat park this researcher also shifted the cocaine or heroin water there but interestingly that rat slowly came out of that addiction although the water was available the cocaine was available he did not go for it because he could hang out with his friend he could experience all that natural surroundings and then he could have his uh, relationships everything was there for him and that brought him out of that drug addiction it's a interesting research that tells the power of positive relationships there are a lot of researches which also say that yoga increases the oxytocin levels even one hour practice of yoga does increase oxytocin also there there is one more study that says that oxytocin has connection with spirituality the spirit the spirituality doesn't mean just that you are praying it's more connected with your beliefs spiritual beliefs so oxytocin increases if you have spiritual beliefs so there is a comparison between oxytocin and dopamine the dopamine i get it with one chocolate if i eat a chocolate i get dopamine but if i share that chocolate with my friend that doesn't make me sad it also makes me happy because i get oxytocin and oxytocin is doesn't have this addictive problems that dopamine has so let's move on this is another very important neurotransmitter called serotonin if you have heard about serotonin probably you heard it in relation to depression when the serotonin levels in the nerve synapses in the nerve joints when it goes down people experience depression we really don't know if depression is caused because of low serotonin or low serotonin is a result of depression we don't know but it is directly connected with it the new antidepressants new generation ssri selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors the antidepressants that are prescribed they increase this serotonin concentration in our brain synapses and that's how people feel relieved of the symptoms but what is this serotonin it's very important in our mood and our social behavior it dictates our mood higher levels certainly have positive mood and active social behavior get involved in social interactions interact with more people that is also connected with serotonin it also has role 
in sleep, then digestion, appetite, memory, how much we remember, or even sexual function. Now serotonin can easily be increased with light exercise and yoga is a light exercise. Yoga is a low to moderate intensity exercise or some mood enhancement activities or even diet. Now if you see the yoga and meditation practice, it covers everything. Yoga and yoga is a light to moderate exercise. Yoga practices such as chanting, pranayam, even asanas, they elevate our mood. The meditation practice also allows serotonin levels to go up. So yoga in a way is a very helpful activity to improve serotonin and that's some probably is one of the main reasons why yoga is so effective in elevating or reducing the depression. So many studies have pointed out that yoga helps get rid of depression. Then there is another hormone called endorphin. It's more of like a natural painkiller. Endorphin is, you can compare it with natural morphine. But when endorphin is secreted, it gives a feeling of well-being, good feeling. Oh, I'm feeling good. It's also the hormone that is implicated in runner's high. Say when you do uh, go for a long run and after you finish your running, you feel very good. It is because of this endorphin. And this endorphin is also directly connected with yoga practices. When I am practicing asanas, when I am practicing even relaxation or even pranayam, we get endorphins. Sometimes people push their limits, then they get more endorphin. But look, there is a little danger here. When people push themselves in yoga poses, they get a tiny bit more endorphins. But then there is more chance that they get injured. And then they develop repetitive stress injuries. So pushing in yoga poses, although you will get a bit more endorphins, it's not good in long term. Many people, many yoga practitioners suffer from long term injuries. So please avoid that. Because you are anyway going to get the endorphin even if you just stretch within your comfort limits. And there is another neurotransmitter called GABA, gamma amino butyric acid. And this GABA is also very important and it's connected with anxiety. Low levels of GABA result in anxiety. Higher levels of GABA promote sense of calmness, peace and no anxiety state. And there's so many studies which show that practice of yoga, meditation and pranayam does increase GABA levels. So I have mentioned so many hormones, about five neurotransmitters and chemicals, starting with dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphin and GABA. And all of these chemicals have shown increase with the practice of yoga. Probably that's the reason why people are practicing yoga in a big way. So I'm going to stop here. I hope uh, this discussion has motivated you to practice yoga very regularly. Hari Om.